Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we're actually going to be working on this piece that's behind me. And this piece is kind of cool because it's actually a dupe of my own work. So I'm copying a look that I've done before. Um, the customer messaged me and said she really liked a piece. It was the one that got away. Could I recreate it? And so I went on the hunt for um, a piece that had bones that were the most similar that I could possibly find. And this is the one I came home with. So um, on this piece, we're going to be doing some decoupage. We've got some gold leafing. I'm going to be using some Wiseau One Hour Enamel. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful finish, and it's going to come together. It might even turn out better than the first one. So I'm pretty excited to see this one totally transform into something that I've done before. And then we can compare them side by side and see, do you guys have a favorite? So stick around and let's get started. Here's where I started on this piece. I picked this up off my local Facebook marketplace and I chose this one because it's got a very nice flat front. The flat surfaces are ideal for this look. You really want those to be able to put the decoupage on the entire body like we want to do with this piece. It does have a little bit of damage, but it's overall in pretty good condition. I sanded it smooth, made sure to remove any of my hardware, and then I'm going to fill any spots that need to be filled. This hardware was interesting because it looked like it was going to be plastic, but when I removed it, it's actually metal. I'm going to sand any loose or chipping spots with my surf prep sander just to make sure those are removed. This front edge especially because this is going to be covered in my gold leaf. I went ahead and just scuff sanded the body just to get it nice and smooth. This is the point that I evened out any spots that needed any filler in them as well. I want to make sure I start out with a nice flat surface for my paper to go onto. Once my scuffing is complete, I'm going to give it a good cleaning and then I'm going to wipe this one down using some water to make sure I remove any cleaning residue. I was pretty sure it was going to be just looking at it, but this one was definitely a bleeder. I was able to tell by how dirty those rags were wiping as I was cleaning it. So I did coat this in two coats of shellac, which is going to be a nice sealer to seal those wood tannins in. Those two coats are going to keep any tannins from bleeding through my paper. You want to keep in mind that paper is porous. It can still bleed. Next, I mixed up a color using a little bit of Wiseau Black and Inkwell, and it created this soft black color, which is the closest match to the background of my paper. I went ahead and brushed on two coats of this color. While most of my body is going to be covered in paper, this under color is really important because it's going to make sure that none of the wood shows through in any areas that you don't see paper. Any place that's going to have paper over it was fine in one coat, but there is going to be some moldings and things that do show, and so I made sure that those got two coats. I'm just using one of my Klingon brushes, a synthetic bristle brush, and brushing on this as even as possible. Anywhere that I need to, I just use a light mist of water just to help my brush glide over the surface. I want to make sure that this is nice and smooth. This is going to be the base that I lay my paper onto, and so I don't want to have any bumps or lumps underneath. With my body all covered in paint, here is where I landed. I'm all ready to start adding some of my decorative finishes on top. So you may have noticed in our inspiration piece that the inside was this rich color of teal blue. And so I want to make sure that I copy that on our dupe. I'm going to mix together some Weisauer One Hour Enamel, and this is in Botanical and Refurbished Gentleman. I mixed them into this dish and then gave them a good stirring. Weisauer Enamel is a true all-in-one paint, meaning that it has built-in stain blockers. It also has a built-in top coat, so I won't need to seal this when I'm done. The inside of this cabinet is raw wood, so it has some bite to it, which means I didn't need to give it a scuff sanding, and I also didn't need to use a primer. But if you're painting any sort of surface that needs some bite to it, go ahead and give a primer underneath your one-hour enamel. One-hour enamel is also self-leveling, so I'm applying mine using a flocked roller. These are from WizFlock. I'll link these in the description for this post. And because it's self-leveling, I was able to roll this on, and it actually leveled out really, really well. I was really impressed with the performance of this paint. It has a beautiful finish on it. I rolled on all the flat surfaces, and then I just used a Wiseau Premium Brush to cut in all the corners and edges. The premium brush that I use has a chiseled tip on it, so it really helped get into all those corners and the hard to reach places. This mixed color is going to be a perfect match for what my dupe had on it, and I loved how this Weisauer enamel rolled on. It was beautiful with the roller, so this is perfect for anything like a bookshelf that you may need to paint, um, any areas that have any of these interiors that are otherwise kind of a pain. Just use a roller on them. It goes on super easy, and it's going to get the job done really quickly. 
This is also an ideal paint for doing cabinets, kitchen cabinets. It's got that durable finish with a nice sheen on it, so it doesn't require a top coat. Um, like I said, it's extra durable, and so this would be an ideal choice for that. It has a nice satiny finish, so this is going to be a nice wipeable surface for the interior of this cabinet. Next, I taped off this edge of my cabinet. I'm going to spray paint this in a coat of gold. I do intend to put gold leafing over it, but I want to have the gold underneath so that anything that shows through my gold leafing will be the gold spray paint and not my blue paint underneath. This paint is from Rust-Oleum. I blocked off my area and just gave it a quick coat. I'm going to do the same process for any areas I intend to gold leaf. So now it's time to start laying my paper. I'm gonna lay this paper onto the top of this piece. This paper is from society6.com and they have a variety of designs. So this is a celestial design. It has a moon and stars theme. I'm applying it using wallpaper paste. This is Roman brand 543 wallpaper paste that I get from my local Lowe's store. Because this wrapping paper is a fairly thick paper, I'm gonna back butter the paper as well. And this allows the paper to sort of absorb some of the moisture and soften. So I'm gonna apply a thin layer to the back of the paper and let that soften. Once that's coated, I'm gonna come and I'm also gonna brush, brush a coat of my wallpaper paste onto the surface of my piece. I only back butter thicker papers and the purpose of that, it's gonna help get better contact between the two surfaces. When I'm brushing on my wallpaper paste, I make sure to pay attention to any edges because I wanna make sure that those don't lift at all. I wanna make sure that those have particularly good contact. So I brushed on about a third of my top and then I'm gonna start laying my paper. If you have a second set of hands, it can be really helpful during this process. You don't wanna lay your paper all at once, so I did pull in some help just to hold up that edge while I get this one lined up perfectly to the corner of my piece. Once I found that 90 degree corner, I'm gonna start laying my paper and I just press it down with my hand and then I'm gonna use a blue decoupage tool. This is from Grace on Design and I'm gonna use this just to start seating my paper into the um, wallpaper paste. You wanna make sure that you're being gentle going over the surface of your paper. This tool has a felt end on it, which doesn't create too much friction, but I'm gonna go slowly over the top. Once the paper is wet, it can have a higher tendency to tear, although this one is uh, fairly tolerant. I'm working from the center outwards, pushing out any excess wallpaper paste to the edges and also working out any air bubbles. Once I have that first section done, I'm gonna come and apply the second set of wallpaper paste and do this last edge of my paper. These sheets are about 24 by 36, so they are fairly large, so I just make sure that I work it in small sections. You'll notice I don't just lay the end down. I'm gonna hold that up and I'm just gonna work my paper down as I go. I try to keep any wallpaper paste from getting onto the face of my paper for a couple reasons. It does dry clear, but it slightly changes the sheen. Um, and this paper, once you get it wet on the front, the inks don't run, which is great. But if you do rub it too much, it can start to remove some of the coloring from the front of the paper. I seam two pieces of paper down the center and the top of this piece is complete. You may have noticed on the piece that we're copying, it had a coved molding on one of the drawers and I wanna duplicate that. So I found this molding at my local Home Depot store. I had Sean cut it down to the size of my drawer and I'm gonna nail these onto the face of the drawer. So here again is the piece that we're copying. You see that center drawer, that's the one we're trying to copy. Mine will eventually be gold too, but here is where I landed. What do you think? It's pretty close, right? I filled all of my nail holes uh, with a filler and then made sure and sanded this smooth. I gave it a coat of my same base and now I'm gonna spray paint this gold to be underneath my gold leaf. I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with this drawer if I was gonna be able to find a pretty close match, but this molding did the trick. This piece had a lot of decoupage, so I broke it up into stages. So here's a photo with my drawer done and then I've got the top and the sides all decoupaged, but I'm gonna go ahead and tackle the front next. With my base of spray paint nice and dry, let's go ahead and put some gold leafing onto this drawer. I'm just gonna use Super 77 spray adhesive. I gave a nice spray to the front of my drawer. And then I'm just gonna take some imitation gold leafing. I have this available in my Amazon shop and I do use imitation and have no issues with it. I make sure I seal this in a gold leaf sealer after I'm done and then I can put my regular clear coat over the top of that. The metal leaf sealer is going to protect my metal leaf and keep it from tarnishing under the water-based clear coat. Once I have my sheets set onto the front of my drawer, I'm gonna work them into those crevices. I'm just gonna use my fingers and make sure I have full coverage. And then I actually use a soft bristle makeup brush in place of a gold leafing brush. And I'm just gonna use this to tap this into those recesses. Once it's all tapped into the recesses, I brush away any excess and this drawer is complete. 
I had gotten some paint onto the hinges and they were pretty old and dirty, but because I had to take the doors off to put the, the papers onto the front, I went ahead and cleaned the hinges while I had them off. You can see now why these doors were so ideal for this finish. They were nice flat surfaces. I got all of them covered in my paper. Each one took an individual sheet, so you want to make sure that you order excess so that you have enough. Each order from Society6 comes with five sheets of wrapping paper. I did end up using two orders, which was 10 sheets, and I used every bit of 10 sheets, and I did have some excess waste, so make sure that you order enough to allow for waste. Next, I'm going to be applying some Would You Bend medallions to the centers of these doors. I went ahead and marked off the centers using a tape measure, and then I drilled them out using my drill. Then I'm going to take my Would You Bend that I've already spray painted in my gold, and I'm going to drill out the centers of those as well. These medallions are going to serve as backing plates for my hardware. I spray painted my knobs gold as well and now I'm going to apply the medallions to the front of my piece. I heat them up using my heat gun to make sure they're nice and soft. I'm heating these from the back because I had already painted the front and I want to make sure that my paint doesn't start to bubble with the heat. Then I'm going to apply some tight bond quick and thick adhesive to the back of my mold and I'm going to use a screw in my screw hole to line these two up. Once the medallions were attached, I went ahead and sprayed this one. I used about four coats of clear coat on the top and then two on the front. These first photos I'm going to show you are of our inspiration piece, so you have it to compare to. Next up, you guys are going to see the completed piece we just worked on. And here is our finished copy. What do you guys think? Do you guys have a favorite? I staged this one pretty simply just using a simple gold mirror and a vase with some orange flowers in it that are a nice contrast against the blues. I'm going to link everything we used in the video in the description for this post. And as always, you can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and my website at brushbybrandy.com. Don't forget to click that subscribe button for a weekly tutorial on this YouTube channel.